Hi friends, here's part three of the series that I've been doing on the unlawful presence waiver. You don't want to miss this one. I'm going to discuss who is ineligible to apply for the unlawful presence waiver, the I-601A, as we call it in the world of immigration. Stay tuned. Okay, friends, we're going to dive right into this one because you know what? Don't you just love it when people comment on YouTube and says the video starts at 2.30 or something like that, you know? So in this video, we're starting right now. So with respect to the unlawful presence waiver, watch part one and part two to learn a little bit more about the purpose of the waiver, how it works and why. Why um, do people pursue this waiver? Get that background, basic background by watching parts one and part two. And also, by the way, in part two, I talked about who is eligible for this waiver. Here I want to first of all talk about who is not eligible. And again, I'm looking at the instructions to the I-601A, which you can pull up yourself and see it for yourself if you want to read. You know, I know some people don't like to read, right? That's why they hire a lawyer. The lawyers will read. But pull the instructions for yourself and see what, what it has to say about this before you consider filing this waiver. Now, who is ineligible to do this? Firstly, if you don't meet all of those requirements that I discussed in part two of my video and what's in the instructions, obviously you're ineligible. Secondly, you're ineligible if you have an adjustment of status application pending with the government, meaning that they have not made a decision on it, they're still considering it. But guys, if you have a I-485 pending, the adjustment of status application pending, you're, you can't apply for this because the purpose of this waiver is for people who are not eligible to adjust their status by staying here in the United States and getting the green card. So for those people who are ineligible for adjustment of status, if they are eligible for this waiver, it allows them to consular process, meaning that they have to go back to their country to be interviewed at the embassy. If you have an adjustment of status application pending, the government will deny this I-601A waiver application. So you cannot have both going at the same time. It just doesn't work that way. It's one or the other. Now, secondly, if you're in removal, deportation proceedings, you can't file this waiver unless, unless your case is administratively closed, unless the judge closes your case uh, pending something like this, pending the approval of your I-601A waiver. The government, USCIS, will not approve your I-601A application unless you provide proof that your case in court has been administratively closed. It's not on the docket. You don't have a hearing date coming up soon, right? It's been administratively closed for a period of time so that you may pursue other strategies outside of court. Administrative closures are getting harder and harder to obtain these days, by the way, under our new administration. So just an FYI, very difficult to obtain it. It depends on your, the facts and the circumstances of your case. And then certainly if you have an order of a final order, a final decision has been made um, by the Department of Homeland Security. The instruction says that you're not eligible for this waiver if you are subject to an administratively final order of removal, meaning the judge made the decision that you've got to go, that you're it's that's it. You've got to go right. Um, final order of removal, exclusion or deportation. If it has been entered against you or issued against you, you're not eligible to apply for this unless unless you applied for and USCIS has already granted an application for permission to reapply for admission under Section 212. That's another complicated area that I'm not going to address in this video, but that is an exception that's allowed here for people who have that final order of removal. And then it goes on to say 
that if you're currently subject to an unexpired grant of voluntary departure, meaning that you are in removal and the judge has accepted your requests, right? And DHS, right, has accepted your request to voluntarily depart or leave the country on a certain date. And it's not a final order of removal against you, which has other very serious consequences for your re-entry. The voluntary departures, it operates very differently than that. It's a less severe option that people pursue in immigration court so that when they do leave on the date that had been agreed to with the government, they can reapply down the road for a visa um, or a green card. So voluntary departure is something that is available for uh, a number of people. Now, this says that you're currently subject to an unexpired grant of voluntary departure from a judge, an immigration judge, or the BIA. Next, if you fail to establish that your U.S. citizen or green card holder, spouse or parent, would experience extreme hardship if you were it refused admission to the United States or that USCIS should approve your application as a matter of discretion. In a nutshell, what this is saying is that you must have that qualifying relative that we discussed in parts one and part two. You must have that relative, number one. And number two, you must be able to prove that that relative will suffer extreme hardship if you have to be sent back home uh, or denied admission to the United States. That's a very technical nuance phrase that I just said. You can still be here physically in the United States and not be considered to be someone who had been admitted. That's another area. We may get into it down the road, but it is a nuanced area of the law. So that's in a nutshell what the instructions has to say about people who are ineligible to apply for this waiver. It gets much, much, much more complicated than what I just shared in this short video. Not every single issue, nuance, and topic have been covered here. Work with an attorney if you think that you may be accruing unlawful presence. Comment below. Know that I read as many comments as possible, but I get thousands of comments on YouTube, not just on my current videos, but on past videos, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook. And this is a working girl here. I run, I, I have a practice here. So please be patient with me. I cannot get to every single comment, but I try my best to scan your comments and respond to hot topics or issues that I think other people may be questioning as well. So be kind in your comments and um, be sure to share this video with other people and uh, stay tuned for part four of this series on the unlawful presence waiver. Comment below. Tell me what you thought about this video. And if you have a specific question, I will again, try my best to read, to scan through your comments and um, try my best to respond to some of your comments. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Hi friends, welcome to another episode. Oh, why do I keep saying episode? What? Hi friends, here I am with another episode. Is this TV episode? Do I say episode? Let's try this one more time.